Hi, I'm Michael Pfeiffer, Principal Consultant and Trainer at Industrial Metallurgists. In, in this video, I'm going to talk about a couple of failure analysis case studies that I worked on that were part of root cause analysis. So the first uh, uh, case study involved a, a manufacturing quality problem. Um, my client was taking pieces of, of circular pieces of, of sheet metal, uh, steel, and deep drawing bowls out of the steel. And occasionally they would get bowls that would have a cosmetic defect in it called orange peel. Orange peel, it's called orange peel because the surface has the appearance of, of, an, of, of an orange peel. The bottom image shows a, a bowl with the orange peel. The top image shows a bowl without the orange peel. Now this had been a problem that was intermittent. Occasionally they would get a batch of steel uh, sheet in and they would form bowls and they'd have the, the orange peel and they would discover they had the orange peel after the bowl had been painted. So they had, were investing a, a lot of time and money into forming each bowl only to have to throw them away and then eventually just not use the, the rest of the lot of the steel. And this was an intermittent problem and this had been going on for several years. So this was a, a manufacturing a process that had been uh, that was mature so it was not it was not a new manufacturing process so we wanted to understand the cause of the orange peel and uh, and the root cause of the orange peel and, and put things in place to prevent the orange peel from occurring again so what i did is got samples of a, a good bowl and a bad bowl there's a bowl without orange peel and a bowl with with orange peel and we know or metallurgists know that orange peel is related to the grain size of the metal. The larger the grains, the greater the chance of a metal that's been deformed will have orange peel. So we looked at the, the grain structure of both the, 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 the good sample and the sample with orange peel and saw that the, the sample without orange peel had small grains and there was a uniform grains through the thickness of the metal. Whereas the, with the bowl with orange peel, the, the top surface of the metal had large grains and the, the metal below had small grains. Now, the grain structure is for the sheet metal would have been um, affected by the steel making process. So we knew that we had to go talk to the steel manufacturer to understand what was going on with their manufacturing process, and what, was, what was causing the large grains. And it turned out that there were um, problems with their, the cooling process used after annealing the steel and the, the, the one surface of the bowl was not, or of the steel was not being uh, cooled fast enough after the an annealing process. And as a result of the poor cooling, the, the grains at the surface were able to grow larger than, than they should have been and resulting in, in the large grains in, in some of this, the steel. So the steel manufacturer had to put measures in place to prevent the, the, the cooling problems. Also, the my client um, had, did not have anything in their specification for the steel about the the maximum grain size that that was okay for the steel maker to supply. So we we studied we we evaluated um, steel from different lots of material and determined what the maximum grain size that can be tolerated before there'd be orange peel, and put that into the specification. And with that, the the, the problem was eliminated and orange peel did not occur um, af after that. So that was an example of, of using failure analysis to, to determine the root cause of a manufacturing problem. The next example I'm going to give is for a, a, a root cause analysis project that was, was related to an insurance client. So in the insurance industry, when there are damages to a, a, a building or a house, um, due to let's say fire or water damage, then the insurance company for the people who own the building or own the house will, after they, they, they make a payment to the insured, will try to determine the, the reason for, for the fire or for the, the leak and, 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 and try to get the people who are responsible for that to, to reimburse them. So if it's, a, let's say, a, a water leak or a fire due to a piece of equipment, they will try to seek the re re repayment from the people who manufactured the equipment or who repaired it or installed it or whoever might be responsible. So in this case, 
Um, it was a, uh, um, the, the, this faucet leaked inside of a building and it, it leaked over a, a course of over a weekend and it caused over $100,000 of damages. You can see on this faucet that the, the, uh, the cartridge and the nut holding the cartridge are missing. What happened is the cartridge popped out uh, from, from the riser, from the brass riser, and, and, that, and that's where the leak occurred. This shows the cartridge that was inside of here, and this shows the pieces of the nut that were holding the, the cartridge down, the pieces of nut screwed onto here, onto the brass riser here. And this shows the pieces of the nut assembled into what they would have looked like before they had fractured. Um, so during the course of the analysis, we, we, we looked at different things, looked at the inside of, of the brass riser, um, looked at and did a metallurgical analysis of the nut. So the metallurgical analysis of the nut revealed, first of all, that it had corroded and also that it, um, uh, that it was made of aluminum. And that was an important detail. And in investigating the inside of the riser, it, it appeared that there had been a leak past the O-ring in the cartridge. So the cartridge is inserted inside of here, and this O-ring prevents water from leaking past the, uh, past the cartridge and leaking out, leaking out of the valve. Well, there was a leak past the O-ring and that wa water leaked onto, it was a small trickle, not a big leak, but it got onto the aluminum and also onto the brass on the outside. And the problem then is with water in contact with aluminum and brass, there was, a, it was basically, basically formed a galvanic cell between the aluminum and the brass. And the problem with this is that when, when aluminum is in contact with brass, aluminum becomes the anode in a galvanic cell and aluminum will corrode. And we saw that there was corrosion of the aluminum. So what happened was that the aluminum corroded and as it corroded, a corrosion product built up on the inside of, of the nut and that corrosion product pushed out on the nut. And at the same time, the aluminum lost, lost, um, lost some material. So the aluminum was losing strength and there was a, a force pushing out on it. Eventually that force got large enough where it caused the, the nut to crack. And once the nut cracked, it came off and it no longer can hold the cartridge in place. And the cartridge then was pushed out by the water pressure and then water gushed out of the valve. So the, the cause of the problem was a, a poor design that the, the people who, who designed and manufactured the faucet should not have used an aluminum nut in contact with brass in an, um, in an environment where water could get on, on both the nut and on the, on the riser. Now, certainly there was also a problem with the O-ring, but O-rings will wear down over time and will start to leak and the manufacturer should have been aware of that. My guess is they tried, they, they used, started using the aluminum nut rather than using brass nuts because the aluminum is less expensive than brass. So it was a way to, to say it was a cost savings measure. That, that's my guess. So the, the failure analysis information about the, 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 the small leak and what the nut material was made out of and the corrosion to the nut was then used to identify the root cause of the problem. It was not, it was due to uh, design. It was not due to installation or repair. And with that information, my client, the, that insurance company was able to go and, and, and get reimbursement from the company that made the faucet. So that's two different examples of failure analysis. Um, so one key takeaway from this is that we need data to solve problems. Many times when there's a, a failure, whether it's in manufacturing or when there's a component failure during use or during testing or when it's a, 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 an insurance issue, um, people may might get into a room and try to guess at the root cause of the problem. And, that's a really inefficient way to try to get to the root cause. It, problems can linger on for a long time as, as people try to figure things out. Don't waste time guessing. Just perform the metallurgical evaluations. Get the information that will help you determine the root cause of the problem and then fix the problem. So that's it. Um, if you're interested in learning more about failure analysis and also just in metallurgy in, in general, I recommend taking a look at our live short courses. It's the Metallurgy for Successful Product series. These are monthly live uh, presentations on different topics of metallurgy. They're only 30 minutes long. 
and I'm covering, we're talking about different things that should be of interest to people involved in design and manufacturing and doing root cause analysis. Things like I'll uh, be discussing um, uh, stress corrosion cracking, hydrogen embrittlement, steel manufacturing, um, uh, electroplating, different um, uh, steel metallurgy, aluminum metallurgy, stainless steel metallurgy, various narrow topics that can be covered in a half hour that will help people learn more about metallurgy and help them be able to make better design and manufacturing decisions. Also, we are offering, we have, a, we have lots of articles and podcasts and news um, we have related to metallurgy and, and metals engineering. And you go to our website at www.imetllc.com and look for the blogs. And also you can sign up to um, receive um, announcements when podcasts are released or when new videos are released on YouTube. Um, so there's a lot of information there if you want to, if you're interested in learning about metallurgy and metals engineering. Um, so that's it. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to email or call. Um, all my information is here. Thanks for watching. Good luck with your metals. Bye.